Okay, so we'll do more energy work. Again, the reason why is you're not doing the bedrock practices. We do energy work when we do Kihon Waza, but if you don't do the bedrock practices, what is a contest will remain a contest. It won't non-contest, okay? So we'll do some energy work. And we have to do the energy work so you guys understand you can't cut to the end, okay? Because you're not doing the bedrock practices. So some of the things like the disciplines, you're not doing them, they have an impact on you. And then you have all those other practices, and particularly the ones that were designed to create some distance from your worldly attachment. You're still being sucked by the world. You still place way too much importance on your career and everything else that goes with it. And so when you show up at here at the end of the day, you're just a wreck by our standards. By the world standards, you're doing good. But by our standards, which are not the world standards, you're not doing well, you're not well. Okay, so we'll do some movement. You're gonna to have to do more movement, okay? So we'll start with the Shulman Subhuti, which is an energetic drill, but it doesn't require as much sensitivity, and so it doesn't require as much of you to fix your bedrock practices, okay? But let me give you some things, okay? Remember, you're supposed to be midfoot. And you're supposed to continually scan for tension. And you're supposed to continually scan for desire. So while you're tasked with cutting, you should not be trying to cut. While you're tasked with picking up the sword, you should not be trying to pick up the sword. While you're tasked with putting down the sword, you should not be trying to put down the sword. As you're getting tired, it's probably going to show up in some sort of cramp. That's how you would describe it. But that cramp is tension. Let it go. Cramps, pain do not exist if you let it go. So I'm midfoot. I'm scanning for tension. I'm releasing the desire. My teacher gave me a koan. Raise the sword without trying to raise the sword. Drop the sword without trying to drop the sword. I keep reflecting on that. Go ahead. Some other things. I'm seeking centeredness, which means stillness. No movement. My mind should not move. When my mind moves, it's dichotomous. If it's dichotomous, I'm in the ego tripartite mind. So, don't move your body any more than your task would. Watch your hands opening and closing and your fingers doing different things. Touch, boom, that's it. In without lifting, down without pushing down. Standing for tension, harmonizing with the sukha. Okay, let's get there and then I'll add more. So. Release your jaw. Neck, throat, tension, release it, release it. Don't lift the sword. If I don't lift the sword, my elbows and my wrists won't change angles. My hands float up. 
my hands drop. Midfoot, not heel. Midfoot, midfoot, not heel. But my heels are on the ground. I don't artificially lift them up. Jaw and neck, shoulder, tension, releasing. Lower leg, tension, releasing. My heels are touching the ground. My heels don't bounce off the ground. My heels don't bounce off the ground. You're too far forward on your feet. Yes, Sensei. No resistance, no contention especially from the teacher. So the sword's not done rising, you're pulling it down. So that would be trying to cut down. Don't try to cut down. Don't change your grip. Hey. Hands float up, hands descend. Gravity pulls my hands. So my metatarsals should spread out hey. if I'm doing this right, not curl. Hey. My metatarsals should spread. You're back to pulling it down. Your feet are back to curling. Shoulder tension. Your shoulders drop. The shoulder blades drop. Too much shoulder tension. You're rounding your back. You're trying to cut. You're trying to have center line power. So you're pulling in everything, just rounding your back. Hands float up. Way too much tension in the upper body from the solar plexus up. And if, I, if my toes are out, then I'm going to obviously be, be heel weighted. So my middle toe is straight, 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 straight. You see how much in that feels to you? Yes. Okay, because you're doing this all the time. Hi. Shoulder tension. You're pursing your lips. This is all tension. It's all normalized and you don't recognize it anymore as tension. Hi. All right. You have to keep working on this thing. And again, don't forget the first practice that you worked on is more your worldly attachment. You have to work on it. You're too in the world, You're way too in the world. You're like, you want me to be a nun? Yes. Yes, I do. That's what I want. You made a bond with me. That was the bond. I'm doing my part, you're not doing your part. But you still want my part. This... Crown. This 
part here. Not the top, not what we now think as the top. That's not the top. And don't wall my chin up. I don't want my tongue to roll back. You put your chin up and you put your tongue forward, you're gonna feel tension. Try it right now. You're, you're, you're like a good modern Aikidoka. You see? You guys see it? Now push your tongue on the back of the top teeth. And you feel there's tongue tension. You feel that? Okay, so no, you have to, that's not the top, that's not where it goes. So I have to put the crown of my head at the top, higher than this. I, this has to go lower than this, do you see? Okay, you have a how. It doesn't do it by crunching my neck forward. Because what you really want in, in your doing that is that the mass of your head gets on your spine. It becomes part of your spine. But you're also going to be able to turn the ears out of the dichotomous mind. Right now your senses, your five senses, they, they see things. Well, they see things because they discriminate. They discriminate because they're dichotomous. So what you want to do is if you take a certain posture with your body in the beginning, just as you can take tension away from your tongue with a certain angle, it could do something to the inside of my ears. That helped me. So what I'm going to do is my chin kind of goes back. And what I do now is when I feel it, I feel it in my ears. I feel it in my ears. I feel the feeling in my ears. Everything in here gets kind of muted. But I'm going to give you physical reference points. But you're looking for a muting. Go ahead. So you have your head. And rather than make your temple go forward, as you would if you just kind of lean your head forward, you're gonna keep your temple still and you're gonna rotate around that. I keep my temple here in space and I make my chin rotate around that. And after a while, you'll feel, oh yeah, I, I feel it kind of muted, like it's not quite like someone did that to you. But it's of that sense, okay? So now you add that, boom. You see how my chin stays there? Doesn't go or here. Okay? Then inside, keep your throat open. This exercise is too quick. So your throat's open. Open this area, as we've mentioned in other trainings. And the air is gonna go in. And on the drop, on the hand descending and the sword going down and your arms going down, it'll exhale. We're, we're not gonna force it today. We have those breathing practices. But this one, I just keep this throat open. And I'm letting what my body is doing inhale and exhale. So in other words, I'm not here going, which we've done. This one, open, I'm trying to let go of the world. Open stays open. I don't breathe, in other words. Got it? Your breath's gonna be pretty short because the movement's so quick. You got it? And you're probably gonna feel like you're suffocating, but that's the fear. Because your body, and your urge to keep the body alive, is part of your worldly attachment. But you're getting enough air. 
Okay, got it? So I don't inhale once, and I don't exhale once. I just keep this throat, this, this throat chakra open, and it does it, okay? All right, if you can, or if you can't, you're doing the first set of instruction, okay? All right, here we go. All right, so, remember that the ego tripartite mind, God mind division is like a expedited summary of Silk Road technology itself. It's meant to accommodate the modern user. The modern user isn't ready for a supernatural world. But there's been plenty of times when I tell you that there's a cosmological framework for all of this. And movement especially movement with intention, is not of the God mind. You're, even as we were doing that drill, we were seeking ways of taking out intention. Do you, do you see that? So I'm breathing without breathing. No, just, my, there's air going in and out of my lungs keeping me alive, but I don't try to inhale nor exhale. The sword is going up and down, but I'm not trying to lift it nor trying to get it down. You see that? I midfoot weight, not by trying to keep my weight off my heels. You see, I, I just do nothing, and then my metatarsals spread. But all movement is is a kind of manipulation. It's a it's a human manipulation of that one part of the cosmos, which is not of movement. So remember that when we did these drills, I complained that you can't do the other work, you see. You know, we need to do this kind of human manipulation, but all human manipulations are not it. So when we do our Kokyu or our Aiki drill sets, the first one, is stillness, but the last one is stillness too. So here we are, we start, you're in Seiza. You're going to get yourself in exactly what I just said, okay? Only we're not moving. So I am not trying to sit upright. You see, I, d I just, Nothing. Find where everything just stacks on itself. Remember, this has to stack. If I go like this and I stop tensing all my tension, guess what's going to happen eventually? Just watch. I'm starting to go, I feel it in my throat because I'm going to fall backwards, so I have to hold myself up here. And now there's tension in my throat. And now, I have to breathe with intention. My throat will not open and do it on its own. So remember, I gotta get the crown of the head on top of the spine and I have to pull back. And I can use this kinesthetic index, but it won't do you any good if you don't feel that in your ears. And the same will go for where your tongue goes. Goes on the top of the mouth towards the front. Put that tip of your tongue on your palate right behind your front two teeth. Don't press on your teeth, that's tension. You should have like a little bump there. You feel that little bump? That's where it goes. Then your eyes are gonna, you're, you're not gonna use your eyes. It's that your eyes are gonna fall. If you pay attention when you go here, it's gonna take muscle to close them all the way. 
So bring your gaze to a 45 degree angle downward just to get you in the area. Or think about the angle of your nose. Do you see this angle? That's where my gaze goes. I'm not looking at my nose, but I take away the lifting and the attempting to see, the seeing of the gaze. I take away the agency of the gaze, the intention of the gaze. Boom, and it'll go to this angle. Once you get there, watch, I want you to get there, and then I want you to close your eyes. And you're gonna see, it took muscle to close my eyes. Try it. You feel that little flexion it took, right? We don't want that flexion. Okay, so to not see, I have to try, I cannot try to not see. That's the same problem. So I don't shut my eyes, okay? So everything, I don't care what you do with your arms right now, for now, but don't do anything that's gonna mess up the spine and the head and the throat alignment, okay? So just let them touch here, let your elbows fall, let your shoulders fall. Once you get there, same thing. Open the throat. And you letting the body inhale. Let's get that at least. It's going to be hard for you to let it exhale. You open the throat and the body's going to fill. The way of knowing, and I don't want to just film me doing it, there's not much to see here, okay? You can't be in the way of the camera, and you're going to sit down. You're going to put a hand on my shoulder and a hand on my abdomen, okay? Now, when I have the intention of inhaling, you feel that. When I just open the throat, Do you feel that? No. Do you feel this? Do you see that? And that's abdominal breathing, okay? It's not me trying to breathe into my stomach. It's what happens from me not breathing and from me just opening and the air will go in, okay? So let's break this up because you have to do something else to get the exhale to be unintentional, okay? So what I want you to do is your elbows are down, your shoulders are down, and I want you to put them on the earth contact point. So if you were standing, that would be your midfoot. So get yourself in position and feel where, when everything's resting, where do I feel the ground pressure? Got it? And once you do that, put your hands on your legs, and now put your shoulders on your elbows in that ground pressure. Fix your chin and crown. Release the throat chakra. It's going to come in faster than you are used to. And then do another rep of that. Still have to release tension. Your shoulders should drop when you put the shoulder mass and the, and the elbow mass on the ground, the earth contact point. Remember not to turn your head and just drop your chin. You have to turn around your temple. Your chin's too down in it. And all throat tension is gone, shoulder tension is gone. Your eyes are too open. Cast them down at the angle of your nose. To someone looking straight on from you, your eyes will look closed. That ears are too up, too up, too high. More cast your gaze down more towards the mat.
Hey, look, I'm gonna give you some confirmatory elements. So if I put my elbows out, you see that? You see that? I, I, my deltoid is activated and the weight's in my hands. I don't want that. My elbows will come down naturally. You see? No, they won't be like this. Come down naturally. My shoulder blades, I'm gonna exaggerate it now. My shoulder blades are gonna drop. They're gonna drop. My elbows are going to come slightly forward. And then when my elbows drop, they're gonna come in towards my rib cage. They can't be out, okay? So make sure your elbows are down here, not out like this, all right? Try it again. Okay, so the, the first, if you're at that first level, I just want you to let this open. Open, and here's your confirm, confirm, confirmatory aspect. Shoulders don't go up, abdomen swells, okay? On the next level, you're gonna give me your hands, okay? This is gonna feel, you're gonna, you gotta be light to the touch so you don't, your tension doesn't change your sensitivity. So it's very light to the touch, okay? So uh, you're gonna feel a swelling when I open the throat, and then you, my stomach won't go in and out on either the exhale or the inhale. You will feel things moving, but you won't feel this. Got it? You see how it goes in and out? Okay, so the first one, you'll feel swell. Notice that now, okay? So when you do your abdominal breathing, yes, here, not here, but not here. Do you understand? Okay. So as you're working more advanced, in English, this is called reverse breathing, but it's not going in and out. It's bad, it's a bad description, do you understand? Okay, so what I'm doing is, the throat is gonna open, got it? It's, it's kind of startling at how, what happens. Because your consciousness is changing. And just like a baby when they're going to sleep, and they feel their consciousness changing, they, they'll tense, okay? So now you're breathing without breathing. It's startling, and your consciousness is going to want to change. That's why you're doing it. You're going. You're trying to move from your ego tripartite mind to its sensation, to what I call the God mind. So as you inhale, your body is going to it's going to want to hold because it's dying. Really, spiritually, it's dying. Do you get it? It's going to seize. So as you feel this, you release, and you're looking for this upper lumbar region. It's a, it's a skill, okay? It's not, it's, not a, it's not an idea. It's a coordination. There's a coordination to it. You're going to release. You're going to be sensitive enough. Again, it's a higher skill. You're going to be sensitive enough to feel that seizure. And then you're going to release it. And then you're going to go, whoa! And it's going to really fill. Okay? And when it fills, I want your mind to accept the death of the body. 
do a death meditation. And as you're doing a death meditation, see if you, if you can try it. Put your fingers here. Feel what it's doing. You're dying. There's no point to anything more. Tomorrow is gone. It's, you get to rest now. Nothing matters. It was all a dream. And as you're doing that, you feel the sword of the executioner on your neck. On your inhale, I want you to feel that there's a kind of stomach going in on the inhale from the inside though. Not me sucking it in, not me pulling it in, no real great flexion. Just release to death. And if you can get that sense, Notice then on the exhale, if you truly let go of all the body, the stomach now also will drop. When you empty the lungs of, hair, of air, this part still drops. And so it expands on the exhale. And so as I'm doing this, there's a pulling in on the inhale and there's a falling out on the exhale and my stomach doesn't move, which is what you felt. It doesn't go in and out. That, that is technically what is reverse breathing, but it's not me having my ego tripartite mind trying to do it, okay? So release, release, death meditation, on the inhale, when you release this, you'll feel almost it's going the other way on the inhale. Do you get it? And that is what stops it from going. You see? Got it? Okay, then on the exhale, keep it released. And then it will fall and so it stays open. Do you understand? Okay? Some confirmatory things, and you have to be careful, okay? Especially if you're, if you're forcing it by reverse breathing like, like moderns mean it. So they're gonna open, and they're pulling in the stomach. You're gonna get a lot of blood pressure change going up this way, okay? But even without it, you will feel a pressurizing of your body going up. Something like that, okay? Got it? But don't try to feel it. Don't intend to feel it. Don't want to feel it. You do the things your teacher said to do. Okay? Try it. Thanks. What happens as you do this is your consciousness changes. So you're, the way you're experiencing your moment right here on this mat, it changes. Okay? That change is that ego tripartite mind coming to a stop. It's going to feel a certain way. That's what you're after. You're not after a stomach that doesn't go in and out. Who gives a fuck? You're not after, say that, you're not after letting go of my worldly attachment. I'm, I'm not after that. I'm after the feeling of the ego tripartite mind coming to a stop so that instantaneously I can be in it. And it's irrelevant of posture or anything else. And this is what I want. My drills that I do are to give me agency in entering the God mind. When, within what environment, it's a skill. Awakening is a skill. Awakening is the gaining agency on bringing a cessation to the ego tripartite mind. 
So, as I have that feeling, I'm now going to do a confirmatory exercise that I have the feeling. So he's going to push, and I don't try to not fall over because now I'm activating my ego tripartite mind. I don't try to hold my arm still. I stay in the feeling of the change in consciousness. I can use my kinesthetic index points, temple, chin. I can use the feeling of the energetics, but I'm more interested in the feeling in the change of consciousness. Because nothing alters once I understand the feeling in the change of consciousness. I don't need the energetics. I don't need the, the little exercises. I don't need them. I don't need them. I don't need them. They just get me in the ballpark. Okay? So when we do exercise two, whether it's katate or ryote, you have to try to keep the feeling that you were gaining from exercise one. Don't now bring all your intention in here. Try to keep his arm there. Try to not fall over. Bring the same exact stuff you were doing, just like you were meditating. Got it? There's, I don't need to have my hands here, do you understand? To, to shut the God mind. Do you understand? So I don't have to have my chin here, I don't have to have Seiza, I don't have to have any of that stuff. But at the same time, it doesn't matter that I'm in those things. Okay? So I keep the same feeling and I am trying to make my feeling of drill two feel exactly like drill one. Doesn't matter what he's doing. In drill one, I did have mass being pulled down by gravity. Do you understand? So here I have energy, gravity's energy, mass traveling by gravity, energy. Here's energy. It doesn't matter, I just do Drill one. In the same way, I would have let go of grip tension or cramping flexion. I let go of this. Anything that I'm feeling, I let go of it. I let go that there's one hand up and one hand down. That's not important. The God mind doesn't feel those things. My, there's no tension. So I can keep that shape. I don't have to go like this. I'm not looking for any kind of advantage, not trying to do anything. I just go into that consciousness. If I do, you're going to feel that upward pressure up, going up the spine and the head goes whoo! And you're going to know that, oh yeah, this is human manipulation. You got it? If you can't do it, you're just going to feel it in your shoulder, etc. Do you understand? So what I mean by human manipulation is you're humanly, artificially in my opinion, manipulating the chi movement in your body. Do, do you get it? Yeah, because I'm adding energy to it. Do you see? I mean, it's like, it's like uh, I'm giving the, the, the chi cycle an adrenaline shot. Fluent! Do you get it? I'm artificially trying to amplify it. That's what this is, okay? It's a good thing to do and you need to do it, but it's not the gate or the destination. The gate or the destination is the stillness drills. Do you understand that? Okay. So these are confirmatory. And what I mean by that is 
it's going to tell me if I can enter that consciousness or not. Okay? Got it? And it, they're, they're, the set is all get me in the door. Because as you saw, I shouldn't need the set. Do you get it? Okay. So not depending, remember the Kokyu, the Aiki sets are, that they're expedited. They're expedited, I mean they're shortcut, so to speak. Because you gotta be able to do this as the bare minimum, okay? But they're meant to expedite your progress in them. You have to keep in mind all the other stuff. So don't make a fetish out of the drill. I just showed you the point is to not need the drill. The point is to not need the movement, to not need the posture, do you understand? Okay. So, oh, I'm going to do Ikkyo, for example. I don't try to do Ikkyo. I don't try to make his arm move. I try to just enter into the conscious state that I want. My hand is just the way that my, the sword, my hand went up, so the sword went up, the sword came down, I didn't make it go. So the same thing as I'm moving, my hand is just loose, very relaxed, do you see that? My hand is relaxed. But it's not wimpy where I'm going. Do you understand, okay? So my, my hand is, I'm gonna leave my, my hand more like this so you can see, okay? Or just like I lift the sword, okay? I don't intend to lift my sword, but I'm moving just like drill one. My, my hand is relaxed, so just like he could, he can't push me in drill one, he can't push me either here. You see, because remember, there's no, there was no need for the form, so he's, he can't move me anywhere in the cycle, okay? Got it? So I, as I come around to do it, my hand is relaxed. But it's not just him. Okay, so for example, uh, Margaret, you become, you're gonna push me at that angle. You know, on the shoulder. You're gonna push me, okay? So push, there you go. And he's pushing. It, nope. I just go into the state and we're, they're not gonna be able to move me. Push, push, yeah, got it, okay. I'm just relaxed, I'm in the state. So if she's pushing, same thing, it would be by myself. You could project, you see? It doesn't matter that there's two different vectors here. It doesn't matter. I'm in that state. Got it? So that would be another conformatory, confirmatory exercise. If I'm doing it right, if I'm not bracing, I can be at multiple angles. You got it? Okay. Just for shits and giggles, right? Uh, again, as I'm moving, you're going to do your inward, your inward spiral, right? Got it? Okay. So uh, same thing as I, I don't can't have that collapsible. Do you understand? Because I I am using the energy. I am artificially mm, manipulating the chi cycle. That's what I'm doing here. Okay. It's human intervention. I come in, move. So, at any angle that I take, as I just, you just saw, like, it doesn't make sense, for example, if she's pushing into him. Do you understand? Because it's like, yeah, yeah that's not it. That's, so that's why you go on the cross. Like you go on the cross, you see? You go on the cross, okay? Got it? So, but, I want to pay attention to this, okay? So he's got his spinal displacement, right? He's got that. I want you to pay attention that it doesn't go off. Right. Remember I did the little goofy thing. Th this part's goofy, right. you see? Okay, so, but I have to bring yourself in, 
But if he were to change it, it's stuck. Right. It's not going anywhere without the tension. You get, do you understand? Yeah. My hand is still just without intention moving through space. Where my training is, is in that state of consciousness. Feeling should be the same as drill one. Go. You feel your desire to grab her hand. There's no desire. Her hand's just there. You can see your mind come back. You can see your ego mind come back to grab the hand. Just the feeling. Now you desire to not grab the hand. There is a pattern that you have to follow. The pattern is coordinated towards this consciousness. If you change the pattern from the one your teacher gave you, you're going to change the consciousness that's being sought through the pattern. Got it? So that your, your hand, the way you get that hand, is not the way your teacher taught you. you know? And because of the concentricity between the martial component and the energetic component and the spiritual component, while it's not spiritual, it's also not martial. You cannot grab a hand like that of somebody who is resisting you. Okay? So you have to do the pattern the way your teacher told you. Okay? Try it again. So in my martial, my arm is going to be in the fight. It's not going to be out of the fight. And I won't do one movement, wait, and then do another movement. If I'm in the state of consciousness of drill one, my entire body is in it. So I don't have an arm that's dead and waiting. Everything is moving, okay? So just like, or everything's involved, let's put it that way. Just like if Margaret came and pushed at this angle, I'm not going anywhere, do you see? I don't have to go, oh, someone's pushing on me. Okay, I'm already in the state you're pushing. And so both sides are involved. Both sides are moving in harmony with each other. Do you see? This hand's on my center line, which is where it would be in a fight. Always bring it into the trap. You see? Take one more turn. In the fight. Pay attention. If I grab your hand, or your hand falls into my grab. You should have known. What's it doing? It's falling into the grab. You see, it came off on its own. When does my left hand actually close? At the bottom. Okay. Go here. Go. I'll let you pass. Go. See, you gotta get, you gotta disarm it with this arm, not with this arm. Pull it off with the other hand. Pull it off, I mean it, do it, you better get it off. You see how much it takes. What do you think is gonna happen in that time? I'm gonna punch you in the face and knock you the F out. 
So you have to go one, just have it ready. Hi. Move this arm with well, this arm. Hi. Just wait. Hi. Go, there it is. Hi. Got it? Hi. There's no desire to grab the hand. Hi. The hand just is there. Okay, so uh, I'm more interested in my consciousness, but I have the confirmatory aspects of it. So I, all the other stuff that you, I could tell you about, you still are supposed to have in there, okay? A swelling, no lifting, an opening, a releasing, right? Uh, Non-attachment, kind of reverse breathing, but in air quotes, not what everyone means, okay? What I said it means, got it? All that should still be there. Right, your set, your your alignment in his young energy and my young energy is on the Earth contact point. All that's exactly the same. Do you, you understand? So you, you can't be out here. And, <laughs> no, the, the fact that he could push me over is confirmatory, which means you were not actually in the cessation of the ego tripartite mind. You got it. And so it's not, about, it's not about going fast or anything. It's just about feeling that feeling. What feeling? The correct number one feeling. The correct drill number one feeling. That feeling. And now move with that feeling, okay? Got it? But as I said, all this is human intervention. Kihonwaza is a human manipulation of these cosmological principles. They are lower level than level than drill one. Got it? Okay. But what, so what you're trying to do here is manipulate that energetic, those energetic aspects, which we already know by those confirmatory aspects, that they alter my consciousness. Okay? But we're gonna manipulate them even more. We're gonna manipulate them so that they spiral rotate. And the way you do that is with your hands. So that it's very important that you don't try to make your hands with an activation of that ego tripartite mind. But I have to keep the pattern because the pattern is gonna spiral rotate the alchemical aspects, the energetic aspects in that lower Tanden field. Got, you got that, okay? So I have to make these shapes. These shape, these spiral circular shapes, I have to make those shapes, okay? I can't be going in and out. Those will not affect it, okay? So if you watch by our patterns, our patterns are rotating, you see, they're rotating. We rotate again. If you were looking at us over from ahead, you get it? If you had a camera up there, you would see this whole thing is rotating. You see it, okay? It's important. And if you watch my hands, my hands, I won't move my body, but my hands are rotating. You see, do you get it? Okay. So there's no reverse and there's no sharp corners. Okay, you got it? And I don't breathe. I just open and the body's gonna breathe. Got it? Got it? I don't breathe. It's like I didn't breathe here. I will have more fill and more exhalation because the movement's bigger. Do you, you understand? Okay, so, but I don't breathe. So watch for that, those circles. But every time, you can make this like a ball in your mind, but it's out here. You see that I'm kind of spinning the ball. You see? I spin the ball. Here's the ball, I'm on the back side, I go under, I go to the top. Okay? That's that inward, that's this part. Top of the ball, the ball's here. Top of the ball, underside of the ball, back on the top on the inside of the arm. You see that? Okay? Boom, boom, here it is, the ball, I take the whole ball, move it, I'm going over the top of the ball, boom, down and in, and that is where everything settles, like drill one. 
That's why I call Aikido pins Kokyu Ho. Okay? So I'm spinning this whole thing. If, if, he, if he wasn't there, you would see me be spinning this whole ball. Whole ball. Got it? You see that? Imagine there's a ball here. You have to do the other side because you always spun it one way. You have to do the other side. Doesn't matter. But you see the pattern. I can only do this. If I can do it on the inside, I can do it on the outside, I can do it on the reverse, I can do it on the inverse. Those are all your tests of Baki. Okay. Okay, so it, first, let me context that, contextualize your question there. By remember that these are, five, if, back to my cultural, cultural anthropology, these are human manipulation of cosmological principles. That, that's what these are, okay? They're not self-defense. Is there a kuden and a hoben? Is there, is there an oral tradition? And is there uh, an ability for uh, um, upaya-like aspects on how you teach? Yes, okay? So as I always say, Aikido is not its kihon waza. It's, this is just the, uh, the mainstay of it, okay? What is the mainstay of it? These are, for lack of a better word, energetic rituals or alchemical rituals. That's all they are, okay? And they're following cosmological principles. In short, again, an expedited way is the structure of the ego tripartite mind has one of its aspects is dichotomy, okay? And to bring a cessation to the ego tripartite mind, which is what you're trying to do, you're not trying to keep someone from pushing you over. That's a confirmatory element. Okay? That's not your goal. If I can truly bring a cessation to the ego tripartite mind, I am going to drop dichotomous thinking dichotomous experience of the world. I'm just going to go away. And what these Silk Road cultures have figured out is your dichotomy is like a force this way and a force this way. Do you get it? The X, Y axis. And what you're going to do if you spiral rotate them, they can't manifest in dichotomy. You spiral rotate them, and you're doing what Mircea Eliada noticed in all these cultures. This is the ritual of the eternal return. So what he's saying, and which I totally agree with, is you are undoing creation to go back to the time of Genesis. That, pre that, that spark, do you see where it happened? And that is misodi. Is you, purification, yeah. Wash, yes. But the ultimate purity is prior to existence by doing the eternal return rituals, okay? So as we spiral rotate the energetic alchemical aspects of our being, our ego tripartite mind starts to spiral rotate. And as it starts to spiral rotate, it actually finds a stillness because it can't find a dichotomy anymore. Do you see? And now it's centered. Now the God mind comes in. 
This God mind, the conscious experience, the consciousness or the experience of the world outside of dichotomy. That is what we're doing. So as I spiral rotate all this stuff, my dichotomous mind, my ego tripartite mind is going, where are we going? What are we doing? If you pay attention, how many times have you got lost on when we're doing a lot of spirals and a lot of circles? Can't stay up. You see, it wants to put it, everything on the grid pattern. It's gonna undo that dominance of the ego tripartite mind, that egoic consciousness, the egoic experience of the world, dichotomous experience of the world. It's gonna undo it, because it can't lock onto its ideal state. Boom, we are against each other. I'm going this way, no, I'm going this way. You get it? It undoes it. And now you undo yin and yang, and you're a pre-yin and yang state. Got it? This is Wu Ji or Dao Zura, pre dichotomy. Okay? Gone. Undescribable, unknowable. Got it? That's where you're at. Hence the God mind. Okay? So that's what we're trying to do. So trying to intellectually understand what we're doing is stopping you from doing it. Okay? Well, what do I do instead? You just do the practices. Just do the practices. Don't try to understand it. Because trying to understand it is going to keep the egoic mind functioning. And this is something that is to be felt. Something that is to be experienced. So it's not just that it's beyond dichotomy and therefore beyond language and therefore beyond describe, describability. It's not just that. It's that the very functioning of the mind, the part of us, the consciousness, that part of us that thinks in dichotomy, that could put it in symbolic form, that could make a language of it, cannot experience what we're trying to experience. And hence, all the practices about wuxin, do you see? You're, you're, trying to un, you're trying to do the no mind. What they're talking about is what I have summed up for you in an expedited fashion is that functioning of that experience of the world, that mind. That's what we want to bring a stop to, okay? So likewise, if you're here and you're thinking self-defense, got it? You're gonna activate that egoic mind and you're never gonna know what we're doing, okay? Now here's the weird part. While I say Kihon Waza is not self-defense, I say there are these alchemical rituals of purification, which is a return to a pre-yin-yang state, okay? While they're not self-defense, because it is a yin-yang culture, it is also a concentric culture. So if you can't enter into this state, you also can't be martial. Okay, so for example, when I showed the hand grab, it's like, that's not martial, you see, but a lot of people think it is because I'm grabbing it and I'm flexing. Do you get it? Even though my goal is not to be unknockable over, that's not my goal, if I am knockable over, I'm not martial. Do you, do you understand that? Okay. So, these are what they are. But if you do want to be martial with Japanese Jiu Jitsu, you, you have to be able to do these drills. You have to be able to do these purification rituals. If you can't, I don't, you're not martial. I'm sorry, you're not. You have to be bigger and stronger than your opponent, and, may, and they have to be unarmed, and you have to be armed, and maybe you have a chance. 